Hello, welcome back. Hopefully you've been following my series of building this Revo slot Porsche. You might have seen my unboxing videos and my initial thoughts. Um, and I say I went through and I had a look at all the different parts and gave you some my opinions on what it was going to be like, etc. Well, now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and we're going to disassemble it and build it back up into a race car. So you can see, I've got some tools ready here to disassemble the car. I've got a one and a half millimeter Allen key, and that's going to do things like my gears, my wheels, uh, and the motor mounts. I've also got a uh, size one Phillips screwdriver tip and a five millimeter socket, because I need those to undo the little brass nuts that are on top here that attach the pans to the center section. Now I don't know if you remember in a previous video I mentioned that when I was going through my initial thoughts I found that this wheel here had two grab screws. Now I found out why it has two grab screws and none of the others have two grab screws. That is because one of the grab screws is totally stripped. One of the threads is totally stripped. So I can loosen that off, take that out, like that. You can see there's quite a lot of aluminium around that grub screw there. But it was a strip thread, so I wasn't too happy with that. Very, That's not very good Revo slot. So I assume that you put that grub screw in because the other one was stripped, so we had to put one in the other hole. So no, I'm not too impressed with that. Um, I'd have much preferred you to put a new hub on before you sent me the car. Well, not that you knew it was sending it to me, but before you packaged it. So I'm not too impressed with that. But I say the quality of the rest of the car looks really good. So let's carry on with our dismantling. That axle's a bit stiff through there. So that we know that will need lining up. I'm going to take the motor out because this nut here is just sort of blocked a little bit by the motor there. So it looks like even if I unscrew the motor out of the mount, I can't get the motor out because it actually sits down in the chassis. I mean, that's a nice feature to get the motor as low as possible for handling, but it does mean that you can't just take the motor out. You might have to move the motor mount to actually get that out. Not too sure what that is, that's just a little small washer that's fallen off. I wonder where that washer was. Oh, there's another one there. So maybe, I don't know where they were. They maybe were on the axle and it just come off the edge of the pillar block. I'm not sure. Oh, that bearing's come out with the axle. Let's just see if the other bearings will pop out as well. It will. It's a nice fit. So there we are. Now let's take the two things apart. Well, actually, hang on a minute. You know, in my previous video, I did mention that the rear of the pans was a little bit stiff when compared to the front, but just dismantled the other bits and pieces. I don't know whether that was perhaps the way the front axle was perhaps bending the pan section slightly and making the pans spring out maybe. But the back end is freed off now. So let's take the two apart anyway. Now it appears that there's some form of thread lock on these. So they are initially very tight to get off. So just be careful you don't end up rounding the screw heads. A few moments later. It's all apart. There's parts everywhere. So I'll just tidy up those parts, have a good look, and I'll be back in a moment. So it's all stripped down. I've just left with my two chassis pieces with the pillar blocks in place. I haven't taken them off yet. 
um, deciding. I'm going to leave those and align those in a minute. But I just wanted to see how flat the actual two chassis plates were. So if with the pan section, if I hold it at the front and I tap the back, you can hear that it, it just makes a little sort of tinking sound on the block. But it's fairly equal both sides. It's not moving a lot. So if I hold it by the back corner, that's not moving much. Hold it by one corner, a little bit little bit more there. Hold it by the other corner. So I would say, judging by that, it's probably got a very slight curve in it. Probably about like that. So I'm just going to, just by hand, just flex that down a little bit, holding it round about there. Just flexing that down a little bit. Just to take out that curve in the aluminium. That's sounding better already. And then is it fairly flat? Is it twisted? No, because if sometimes it could be twisted one way or the other way like that, but it's not. Obviously if that side was up and this side was down, then you could probably tweak it. It'd probably be twisted around that U section there. But that's much flatter now. The other thing to watch out for is, are there any burrs on the underside of the chassis? Now, I sort of felt some burrs and these parts here where the brass collars go through, these parts had little burrs on them. So I'm going to deburr those. Now, just take a really sharp knife and literally just run it around the edge of the hole like that. You can hear it just scraping slightly the edge of the hole. Not too much because you're not, you know, I don't want to open up the holes and, and make more chassis movement, etc. That's sort of something that's probably not allowed in the rules. But I think you're allowed to get rid of any nasty burrs on the holes because obviously they're not meant to be there in the first place. And that would be something that would be different on everybody's chassis. So you've got to try and blueprint it to make it the same as other chassis. So I'll just get rid of those burrs there. And again there, you can hear the scraping sound. There we go. I'd already done the other couple of holes before I filmed this part. But there we are. So that part I think is now much flatter. And I'm happy with that part. Let's move on to the centre section. So again, I'll do the same thing. Maybe hold it at the front. Or hold it where the axle's going to be. Tap on the back. That's not too bad. This seems to be a much flatter section. That one's not, not lifting up at all. I'm very happy that that is pretty flat. So I think now that I've got my two parts to be nice and flat, how do they actually move? Well, again, it's worth considering thinking about how that plate is gonna sit on the center section. Again, I probably don't want burrs on these holes because when those little washers or little brass collars sit onto there, they might not sit square. So I'm going to deburr these four holes here too. There we go. So those, those four holes are also deburred. So hopefully when I assemble this, that will hopefully cure some of the movement uh, problems that I had at the back of the chassis that you might have seen in a previous video where it was binding up at the back. Maybe it was the burrs inside these holes that were causing it to bind up on my little brass collars. The other thing I've got to look at perhaps is, is the rear of this pan section aligned nicely with the center of those holes. Maybe if you notice, if I squeeze it, you can flex it in and out like this. So maybe it might be slightly bent and these two holes might not entirely line up with the centers of those holes. So that's something I'll be checking when I screw this together and seeing does it move uh, as it should and are they uh, concentric with each other. When I was looking through the spare parts list for these Revo slot cars, I noticed you can get these in different lengths. Now, 
I wasn't quite sure what that actually meant. They were just sort of specified as one and a half millimeters, one millimeters, three millimeters, etc. But what that actually meant was it was the length of the turned down part of the nut. So I was also interested in what does a car come with as standard? Well, now that I've got a car, I know what it comes with because I can measure it. So let's have a look at what this one actually is. So I'll bring that down to there and you can see it's a one and a half millimeter collar. As you can get different lengths of these, then I assume that will change the way the car handles and moves together. So when that little collar fits into there, can you see, there we go, that it sticks through the pan section. So as it's sticking through the pan section, if you had a longer collar, then you would have more up and down movement of your pan section in relation to your center section. Not entirely sure how that would affect it on the track, but I do have another set, so that's maybe something I will try uh, at a later date. But I'm just gonna assemble it as it is for now. So I've just checked by eye that the holes in the pan section line up nicely with the holes in the center section. They look pretty close, but we'll only really know for sure when we put these little brass nuts on. So I'm gonna assemble this just lightly. I'm not gonna tighten the screws really tight, but I'm just gonna assemble the two parts and see how well they line up. A few moments later. So there we go. I have those assembled loosely. And actually, I can see that there is some movement Not masses, but it is moving freely at the moment, up and down. You can see these are still not fully tightened, but they're not moving too badly. I'm just gonna tighten these down a little bit and see if that affects it. Right, again, I've not tightened them up really tight, but I've nipped them down now, so they're not gonna be moving around. I say I haven't put any thread lock or any glue on them yet. Uh, that's something I might do because clearly the manufacturer thought that it was worth gluing these screws in so they didn't rattle loose, perhaps, and then your whole chassis falls apart. But it appears that the pan section is now able to move freely. There's not a lot of movement around those holes, but it is able to move freely on the centre section. So that's much better than it perhaps was when I first took it out of the box, if you've seen my video of it binding up a little bit. So I'm fairly happy with that. That's a little bit of an improvement. If it didn't line up, then I could obviously take it apart and I could take this, center se this pan section here and I could hold it onto a flat block and I could spread those two back parts out or push them in a little bit whilst holding it on, on a flat block and then I could perhaps realign those holes to get it to move equally from side to side. But it appears to be moving the same at the front as it is at the back, so I know they're pretty much aligned. Right, so you may have noticed I've taken it apart again now. Well, one thing I noticed in a previous video, um, when I was watching some other videos of people that set these up and had a race of them, they were quite noisy chassis. So every corner they went to, when they went down the straight, you could hear the sort of rattling of the chassis. So that's metal on metal. And some experience I've had from racing larger BSCRA and ISRA type cars is that perhaps if the whole chassis is just rattling about, it doesn't handle so well and you need to damp that rattle somehow to stop the vibrations. So I think, again, I've seen this in another video. People have had the ideas of sticking little bits of tape in between the two chassis sections, which help damp it and so on. But the rules that I'm gonna to race to don't allow that to happen. And probably your club rules may not allow you to do much to the chassis, but you are allowed to lubricate things. So I thought, well, I've got some little silicon grease here. So I'm gonna put a small amount of silicon grease on the center section here and around the little brass collars just to damp that movement a little bit and stop it from rattling about. No idea if it's going to work, um, but we'll give it a go. Um, some people recommended it, 
So let's try that out and assemble it again. There we go. I'll carry on with the others and we'll be back in a minute. So my chassis is now assembled again with the silicon grease in between the two chassis plates. It definitely moves a lot more smoothly. I would say it doesn't rattle, it doesn't clatter. It does have some form of damping in there. It feels like it's just not necessarily sticking together, but it's a little bit sticky. So there is some resistance to movement, which is about what I was trying to achieve really. And that works very well on something like a JK C43 production chassis. So hopefully with this being the same idea of a two part rattler chassis might work in the same way. So only time will tell when I try it on the track, but let's hope we're successful.